right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming back, and I hope you're having a good morning or evening, wherever you are. Um, I am going to uh, speak, well, I'm just going to provide an introduction again. Today, the afternoon session is on policy, and we're very fortunate to have with us Maria Soldidad Ramirez Montoyo, from, uh, who's the OER chair in Mexico and Jane Frances Obiageli Agbu, who is the OER chair in Nigeria. Uh, they will be addressing the topic of policy today. And right now, I'm just going to give an introduction. For those of you who've heard me give this introduction several times, please bear with me. For those of you who haven't, please enjoy. Here we go. Next slide, please. Okay, the objectives, the reason we're having these meetings and the objectives of this session and as is the, are the objectives of each other set, each of the sessions is to fur further clarify the priority areas of action per working group. So what we're talking about here is drilling down. The, we've had three, this is our third consultation as a, as a group since March, which is not Bad at all, actually. The first co consultation was the launch meeting in which there was a survey and we identified the main areas of action per working group. And the working groups are based, of course, on the first four areas of the, of the recommendation. Then we had the survey in which we tried to drill down further into what are the main points that this coalition could work on both collectively and what are the areas that the members of this coalition are working on individually in their own organizations that could eventually be linked together to, uh, to, for further collaboration. The point of this discussion is to have a better idea of the results of the survey, to flesh it out, to understand better what are the main parts on the topic of policy that would be of value to concentrate on uh, in terms of an action from the dynamic coalition and what are its parameters, what are, what are the dimensions of these activities. And in this case, for this afternoon, we'll be looking at the area of policy. The second objective is to understand the parameters of an electronic tool for information sharing and collaboration on the activities of the Dynamic Coalition, both what's being done within the Dynamic Coalition and what's being done individually outside by the uh, different organizations that could perhaps be linked together to establish collaborative links and to perhaps move forward even uh, more as uh, in the future uh, in part in further partnerships. This is in line, of course, with the objectives of the Dynamic Coalition, which is to support international cooperation. The question here is about user needs and in terms of what would be useful to share this information. This is a question we've been asking in each of the workshops, and it, of course, is transversal. And we'd just like to, main to get your, uh, your feedback on this. Um, the next thing I'm going to look at is the framework in which we're working. Could we go? Yeah, voila. Okay, so those of you who have been in the previous chats, previous sessions, you know all this, but if you're new to it, basically I just want to bring your attention to the format of the discussions. We are using uh, Zoom and there are um, as you can see, there are 16 participants right now in the room. Of the 16 participants, um, 17 now, um, we do not have a means to have uh, to show the other participants for you to see the other participants because of the of the way this tool is made. But we will be sharing with you after this discussion the list of participants, and we will be doing sharing also the uh, breakdown in terms of gender, uh, region, and institution type. Uh, the, uh, if you want to participate, and we would like you very much to participate, we'd like you to raise your hand and we will give you the floor or to put your question in the Q&A box. As you can see on the screen, it's the one in the middle. It says Q&A and it is, uh, it's there that we would like you to um, put your in. What we will do when you put the question in the Q&A box is we will read it so that it will be interpreted into the other language from which it is written. Um, the chat function is not functioning. Uh, 
in this in this framework so uh, and we pleased well it is functioning but we will not be able to take questions there because it's too complicated and too difficult to to manage the uh, the discussions if there are questions in the Q&A and questions in the chat as well as the other information that goes through the chat um, chats are uh, so there you have everything. Oh, this session is being recorded and we will send out an address very shortly where the recordings of this session and the previous sessions are available for you to uh, listen to again if you want to or to send further comments. The rapporteur for this meeting is Neil Butcher who uh, from OER Africa and he's joined here on the as one of the panelists with his uh, colleague uh, Mohini Bajnath who is also s assisting him. There is interpretation. What you have to do is uh, put your cursor down to the button that says interpretation, which I don't seem to have for some reason on my screen right now, but I'm sure you have it. And you have to go to the language that you want the interpretation to be in, whether it's English or French. So if someone's speaking French, if you go to English, you'll hear what they said in English. If you say disable, you will hear what's being said in the language that it's being said. Um, oh, if you've, if you've registered for one session, you've registered for all in principle, and the link is good for all the sessions. So with that, I will give the floor to our panelists, Jane and Maria, and I thank you very much. Thank you. Jane, thank would you, you like to start? Uh, okay, Maria? Yes. Uh, I think what we drew up, we you know, have to start with the presentation, the objectives. Yes, of from course. our earlier discussion. Yes. 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 So we just uh, quickly introduce ourselves. Yes, okay. of course. I'm going to share the presentation. Um, Yes. I'm um, sharing the presentation already. Oh, yeah, just tell thank, me when you want me to advance the slides. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, welcome all for this session and thank you for staying here with us, uh, with my partner, uh, Jane Friends from the <coughs> Open uh, University in Nigeria and me, Maria Soledad Ramirez from Tecnológico de Monterrey in Mexico. Uh, we are here with you and thank you uh, for your collaboration for the section for policy. In the next slide, uh, we can see the, the objective for this meeting uh, is about the further uh, clarification of priority areas and identify activities and uses relating to electronic tools to develop and sustain to support the uh, policy of OER. And in this session, it's very important your collaboration with your comment and apportation for uh, the construction, the ideas for, for the policy, for the recommendation for OER. In the next slide, Jane can uh, share the main list point for the, this policy. Yes, thank you, Maria. Uh, by way of introduction of this slide, I want us to recall that uh, the Second World OER Congress, which was concluded in Ljubljana in 2017, stipulated action plans for OER, and the reflections, these reflected the recommendations from the six regional consultation meetings as well as the open consultation and the deliberations and recommendations on the, at the Congress itself. And the, the action plan basically tried to identify concrete actions to mainstream OER and which will ultimately support government achieve the SDG four goal of uh, quality education. And uh, we are here to Day to deliberate on one of the strategic areas, which is supportive policy for open educational resources. So let us not assume that we know what that section is all about. So for the benefit of 
maybe a new entrance in this area. We have five subsections under the policy area, the action plan. And in the first section, it's about, you know, trying to encourage government to develop, um, to, to, that is developing and implementing policies or regulatory, uh, basically is to encourage government to open up and develop educational materials that are publicly uh, funded materials, as well as uh, dedicate to public domain, and also dedicate them to public domain, as well as to financial and hu uh, human resource to be coordinated for the implementation of this policy. And the other one is try, tries to encourage the government to uh, support institutions or to, to develop and update legal or policy framework in order to stimulate the and adaptation as well as redistribution of quality OER for educators and uh, learners. And uh, in addition to develop and integrate quality assurance mechanisms for open educational resources into the existing quality assurance strategies for teaching and learning basically and the third one is to develop mechanisms to support and incentivize all stakeholders to publish such source files and accessible OER using standard open file format in public repository then the third, the fourth one is to align OER policies with other open policies and guiding principles, such as those for the open access, open data, open pedagogy, open source software, open science, and finally, adjusting or reforming the curriculum and assessment in accordance with the needs of the use of OER and to motivate the active use creation, sharing of OER by teachers and students, and recognize the learning outcomes of OER-based programs of study. So this is just a refresher of where we are coming from and where we need to be. Because this meeting basically is to take it up from here. Uh, it's, uh, it's part of the way forward is a synthesis of the survey that was uh, conducted in March uh, 2020. And uh, I think, uh, Maria, uh, I think you're supposed to briefly uh, talk in this area. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jane. Yes, we have 22 points in this synthesis. And uh, the main idea is about the different topics for one hand is the, about the government and the other heart of society and the universities. And the ideas is about the high level dialogue uh, with minister, director for the benefits su for supporting uh, OER. Another is about uh, that we need a periodic interactive regional and interregional for, uh, for, with forums in education and uh, working about OER policies should be aligned with the prevailing uh, educational copyright publishing IP policies. Um, regional and international government should develop and regulate frameworks. This is very important that encourage embedding open licensing in public funded. Advisor support in the development of, of, open, of open policies sharing experience and documents on OER in regional and interregional levels, a portal, this is very important too, a portal to share documents should be initiative across region, should be maintained, uh, collaboration with commercial publisher in OER is, net, is needed, aligning of OER policies with open data is needed, uh, review and revision of existence policies and recommendations to remove barriers to OER, 
In the next slide, finally, the other point is about uh, educational institution across region to enable policies that encourage recognized for OER and collaborative platform to enable region identify gaps. Region should encourage and support institutions to develop legal framework to stimulate OER activities. Uh, guideline detain quantity assurance research this is very important too research network in oer and open education should be encouraged across and within region with correspondence policy guidelines continuing support and capacity building amongst the unesco member states to develop oer policies regional and interregional uh, collaboration mechanisms towards inclusion of oer transforming education encourage and support institutions to develop uh, or update legal or policy framework to stimulate the creation, access, reuse, repurpose, adaptation, and redistribution of quality OER, develop and integrate a quality assurance mechanism of OER for OER, encourage research in OER, annual meeting with donors and potential donors should be encouraged. With this idea, we have another meeting in, in March, in July. And Jane, can you share the points for the, the other survey, please? In the next slide. Yes, thank you, thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. Yes, it is actually important to know that from these 22 points, the committee, hello? Yes. Okay, it's, uh, it's actually important to note that uh, from these 22 points, the committee was able to, to, to compress them into three main points, three main areas, um, which are identification and sharing of information and support. Then the other one is to encourage collaborative mechanisms. And the third uh, information is uh, research okay so the, the uh, under the first one which we are kind of a roadmap that was compressed from the 22 initial points for the from the march survey we have uh, the first one the sharing of information and support and how do we plan to do that the committee noted that it should be through development and implementation of institutional policies both stand alone and or integrated. Then also the committee suggested that it should through, be through aligning OER related policies to open education, open access and prevailing IP policies. Then the third one is regional and interregional frameworks that encourage embedding open licensing to public funded educational materials mechanisms and tools to share best practices in policy issues inter and intra-regionally. Then the, the last one on the sharing of information is uh, encourage international and multilateral frameworks that reinforce open access to information, data, and transparency in this area. Then under the encouragement of uh, collaborative mechanisms. It was suggested that to achieve this, there is a need to develop and implement tools to support copyright and IP policies and laws, then collectively develop templates based on analysis of good practices. Then the third one is to encourage research, encourage development of policies that recognize OER users and creators. Then the fourth one is to encourage and develop policies that stimulate creation, access, reuse, repurpose, re -adapt uh, adaptation, and redistribution of quality OER by educators and learners. Then the last one under this section is to develop and integrate policies that identify and address barriers for OER integration in education. Then the third session is research. Basically, this section is about establishing research networks to provide evidence-based to for policy development in OER. 
it's important to note that this synthesis and roadmap was uh, presented or collated by 100 experts from 28 countries. And then furthermore to uh, continuation of this exercise, in July this month, a survey was sent out basically to provide insight on these three important um, areas in, uh, for policy in OER, that's sharing of information and support, encourage collaborative mechanisms, and the research in this area. So next slide, please. Next slide. Hello? Hello, can I have the next slide? Hello? Uh, Jane, I'm on the slide called Further Clarification of Priority Areas, Electronic Tools Now. Are you wanting me to go past that? Because I've, I've advanced quite a few slides already. No, I, I, I want the, the, the next slide on... Um, on the results of the July, yes, yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So this is the result of the July uh, survey uh, on the three priority areas, sharing of information. And uh, you can see from the result, there is a consensus that actually we are supposed to look at or focus on these three areas, okay? Can you go back a bit? Yes, and uh, yes, so that is that. There is an overwhelming support for identification and sharing of information, encourage collaborative mechanisms and research, okay? So, and uh, the, the next slide, please. Then down, we're going to have uh, ask the question, is there any other area of action to be addressed as priority in future work for policy? Recommendation. Uh, I think Maria, if you can take this uh, section, I'll be to be fine. Yes. Uh, here, the the question is about the. We have uh, different ideas now about research, about the research uh, information, and uh, which of these uh, do you think about is is priority to to do work? Uh, and any other areas that do, uh, can you recommend me, recon, recommend us for policy recommendation? This is the question and now it's open for the participant to share the ideas, please. So please feel free to raise your hands if you'd like to make any inputs or comments um, about other about priority action areas that haven't been included in the slides that you've seen so far and I will uh, unmute you to talk. Maybe we can share the, the slide, uh, two slides before, the route map, or three, this one. Yes, thank you so much. This is uh, the ideas, and what do you think about the priority for these ideas, or if you have an, another ideas?
So uh, we have an input on the Q&A from Cable Green, who says, uh, Creative Commons is ready to work with others to create a model and template open policies for all kinds of education policy, including but not limited to, one, open licensing policies on publicly funded educational resources. For example, open licenses required on publicly funded educational resources. Two, open licensing policies on publicly funded research resources. For example, a zero embargo period, open license on articles and data in the public domain. And three, promotion and tenure policies that support instructors who openly license and actively share their educational resources as OER. Thank you for that input cable. Um, Alexis, uh, I will unmute you now if you'd like to make, or you can unmute yourself, I think, as a panelist, if you'd like to make a contribution now. Sure, thank you very much, Neil. Yeah, I just wanted to say under the first point, um, we do have from 2019 the guidelines on the development of open educational resources policies that was developed by uh, Commonwealth of Learning with UNESCO. Um, and so that outlines pretty much a step-by-step -step systematic approach for designing and implementing OER policy. Um, so that can be a very useful document, I think, in moving forward with some of the um, policy work and having a you know, common framework in the approach for this as well. Thank you, Alexis. Um, that is supported by a comment from Igor, I think, who says, I think that the availability and creation of various templates, toolkits, guidelines on the creation of OE policies is important. But the first step here should be to consolidate and review existing resources that have already been developed in this regard as a starting point, including Col and UNESCO, as well as various NGOs and associations. Uh, I'll come on to some more comments in the Q&A, but first uh, I have a hand from Jan Newman. So Jan, um, I've opened up. You should be able to unmute yourself and talk now. Yes, I just unmuted me. Can you hear me? We can. Perfectly. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm Jan Neumann. I'm the project manager of the OER World Map project. And um, I just wanted to notify you on the activities we are currently um, um, taking. And um, we have a focus on policymaking at the moment. And we have started um, 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 collecting policies based on the collection which uh, was done by uh, Creative Commons in the past. And so we have currently already 222 policies um, registered on the um, poly on the OER world map and um, I will share a link in a second and we are also um, building a new page which will focus on policy making especially so this might be one first step um, to um, yeah to, to address this topic of, of sharing experiences from policy making and and um, fostering global uh, mainstreaming of OER and um, while we um, have this um, collection of policies already at, at place, um, we think that additional um, activities have to be taken to support um, sharing of knowledge and experience. And therefore, we, we already started um, to write um, um, an article um, on uh, collective policy making and participative uh, policy making and also just recently triggered by this discussion, um, partly triggered by this discussion, uh, we, we have an idea to create a course on, on policy making. So there, there are three ongoing activities um, at the moment to summarize. <clears throat> the first will be, will be to launch a, a site uh, which includes um, the, um, um, the collection of policies which is already available on the OER world map. Um, second, um, provide uh, additional information on how to um, make participative um, policy making. And third one, an idea for future collaboration, um, uh, creating a course on policy making. Thank you, Jan. Um, I'm going to read out next uh, an input from Jenrin Wetzler at uh, Creative Commons. 
Regarding the development and implementation of institutional policies, it will be important to assist government lawyers who are A, almost always involved in policy conversations and B, not familiar with open licensing or OER. Creative Commons legal and edu open education teams regularly talk with and answer question from questions from lawyers at large institutions and governments. If lawyers in nat national ministries and departments of education have legal questions in, about copyright and open licensing, she suggests they contact the CC Open Education team. So thank you for that uh, information and suggestion as well, uh, Jenrin. Um, I'm going next to move on to Igor, who has raised his hand, Igor Lesko, Lesko from uh, OE Global. Igor, over to you. And maybe you can also uh, outline what you said in your last chat comment. You can unmute yourself now. Igor, would you like to unmute yourself? I'm unfortunately unable to unmute you on my side. I think Igor might be struggling to unmute himself. Um, I'm gonna just try to grant him the right to talk again. While he's dealing with that, uh, I'll read out his comment, uh, which is also contained in the Q&A. He has a comment related to mechanisms and tools to share information and best practices on policy issues inter and intra-regionally. At the moment, there is no real or tangible way for people advocating for policies or policymakers and administrators to connect, to share information about practices, challenges, to learn, to network, etc. In other words, where is the entry point for someone interested in affecting OER slash OE policy changes? The UNESCO portal could be one such avenue. There are other possibilities such as the OE policy hub. So thank you for that input. Do I have any other hands of people who'd like to make contributions at this point? Ah, so next I have Lisa Petridis. Um, Lisa, please go ahead. Hi, Lisa Petridis from ISKME. I just um, really want to reiterate uh, what uh, Igor said around uh, the entry point in the way for people to actually connect and share information about those practices. I think we're, we've been working as a field, and, and many of you who've been doing policy in other countries have made your policies uh, freely available, the tools you've used to make them, there's been good consult with lawyers across countries, but the actual sharing of the day-to-day -day practices and challenges is, I think, one of the key pieces now that uh, we need to find some mechanism and structure for as the OER recommendation is implemented across the member states. Uh, drawing on the session on sustainability uh, yesterday, <clears throat> I think the piece around continuous improvement, I'd like to, to, to reiterate that this is where I think it, it needs to be because if we don't not every implementation of policy, even if you follow the framework that was very successful in another country, is simply not gonna work in the same way. So if we understand what those challenges were, what those impediments were, what those, uh, what those solutions were to there, I think that would be so useful uh, as an entry point for those who are just beginning this process. Thank you. So maybe back to you, Jane and Maria. I'm still trying to work out how to get Igor unmuted. Um, we'll see what we can do. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. Okay, Maria. 
Yes, uh, I, I would like to know more ideas about the, what do you think about the research in this topic? Uh, because uh, we need improve in the knowledge uh, and the policy is, is, a, is one area very important for the OER. What do you think uh, to establish a research network to provide evidence uh, based for policy development in OER? which is the possibility in the different region, which are the practice that we have. We have uh, Igor unmuted now as well. So Igor, let's go ahead. Um, thank you, Neil. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, okay, sorry about, the, <laughs> sorry about the, the mix up. I actually had to share my link uh, with one of my, with my colleague, uh, Paul Stacey, who was unable to log in. And I think that's where the confusion is happening uh, because he was trying to raise his hand too. Um, the, the one thing that I wanted to also mention in terms of the priorities, I think that it's really important to, um, to figure out some effective communication strategy or a set of strategies. And I, I believe, Neil, I think you've got some views on this too. So in other words, also what kind of arguments with respect to OER or open education resonate with different policymakers, either at the institutional or at governmental levels. Uh, because uh, policy arguments in this regard that are effective in some countries do not necessarily resonate with policy makers, ma makers in other countries. So this really points to a more sort of nuanced approach to policy advocacy or, or advice. Um, and um, so I think that it's important to focus on uh, effective communication strategy in this context too. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Igor. Next, we have uh, Leo Haverman. So, Leo, you are able to talk now. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks, Neil. Um, I just wanted to respond to Maria's question about, uh, about the importance of research and establishing research networks and really say I, I strongly um, agree with that point. I'm here as a member of the OER uh, Policy Hub um, group um, working with Jan and Javier and Fabio, but uh, also um, another of my um, roles is I'm a doctoral researcher at the Open University and I'm looking at institutional policy making um, on open education issues. And I think it would be great to be in a, um, a, a bigger network of people who are also researching these, these issues and be able to uh, kind of pool our, our knowledge and, and perhaps our data as well. Thank you, Leo. Uh, and in the other, in the other side, uh, we have uh, seen about uh, different ideas uh, to policy too, uh, to share uh, the best practice uh, for the policy because the different region have uh, characteristics very special. And maybe this is another point, another way to, to work together in this side. Okay, thank you for your comments and reflection. And Jane, uh, uh, can one, you- One more hand, um, ah, okay. Maria, thank from, you. Thank uh, you. Cable Green. So Cable. Ah, you, Cable. Thank uh, you, Cable. You're talking, you'll just need to unmute yourself. Yes. Okay, th thank you, Neil. And Maria, I, th I think that's a, a very important question that you asked about what policy questions should we be working on? Um, I would respond with, uh, we talked about this in an earlier session as well. I think one of the things that would be useful here would be to have uh, a mechanism where multiple countries could come together and discuss where they're having uh, challenges, uh, thinking about how to implement open policy, where they lack evidence, uh, where they might. So for example, if the argument is made that it's a more effective use of public funds. If I was a policymaker, I would want to see evidence that that's actually true, which would very likely call for a research study. And if I need that in my government, odds are that many other governments also require that same research. And so maybe uh, something like the UNESCO Dynamic OER Coalition could be uh, a mechanism or a portal or a convening where governments could come together with the various questions they had, uh, research challenges, and uh, coordinate activities. Uh, we could, you can imagine 10, 15 countries uh, together designing a research study that would answer 
uh, many of the questions that they had, but we could run one or a few studies across those countries uh, to get them the answers. And if we do it in an organized way, uh, we can do, we can not only get the, the answers to countries, but most important, we can do what Lisa was talking about, which is to find out what's working and, and what's not working. Thank you, Cable. Yes, and it's very important to continue and review uh, what happened with this policy uh, when is the implementation in the different countries and we uh, improve for, for more policy maybe in the interregional and, and global. Thank you for your, your aportation. And we, we can move for the other question. What do you think, Jane? Um, do we still have questions? If not, we can move to the electronic tools and the collaboration, because I can see that most of the discussions are already responding to, towards that section. Yes. Um, so I will just, just before we move on to that section, uh, Jane and Maria, I'll quickly read out uh, two additional inputs into the Q&A so that the translators can translate for people. Um, the first is from Alexis Carr, who says, regarding Maria's question on research and linking to Paul's comment above, it will be important, uh, sorry, uh, let me go to the first comment. I missed that because it's under Igor's name, but this is actually Paul Stacey uh, commenting. Um, I think a critical need is to generate demand and requests from the member state governments. Lots of, offers to lots of offers to help with policy, but to date, little to no demand or requests. So he's uh, suggesting we need to generate that demand. And then Alexis, building on that, uh, regarding Maria's question on research and linking to Paul's comment above, it will be important for research to examine the impact of policy and cost effectiveness which can help provide an evidence base and foment demand from member state governments and institutions. And then lastly, Igor adds, I agree with Cable's comment. In terms of research, more is needed to one, they have a better understanding about the different policy approaches taken by different institutions or governments. Two, related to that, have a better understanding why certain policy approaches have been successful or worked while others have not. And three, look at which policy frameworks are impeding OER slash OE and therefore should be dismantled or revised. So I think with that, um, let's wrap up on this section and move on to the electronic tools, Jane and Maria. Sorry, I'm just reading those out for the purposes of translation. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Maria. Okay, so can I take it from there? Here, yeah, Maria. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the aportation. Yes, it's, it's very important and I'm happy with your comment, uh, Igor, Alexis, and all the participants, uh, because we need to, to work in these ideas and looking for the best uh, practice and, and continue improve in the knowledge for the policy and research. Thank you. Okay, Jane, thank you. So thank you so much and thank you to everybody that put in clarifications, observations, questions, it will all get towards improving this document and also more insightful and, uh, conversation. And uh, thank you, Cable Green, for that observation on the, the policy questions to be addressed. It's very important. Thanks, Maria, for raising that uh, question. Uh, Ego, thank you so much. And thanks to everyone that asked questions. So recall we have two objectives for this presentation. The first one was to clarify areas of priority, starting from the 22 uh, 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 points identified in to, uh, March to, uh, this year to the roadmap that was compressed to three areas of priority. And uh, with this discussion, we've been able to elaborate more on possible areas to look for or work towards in future. So we we're going to the second objective of this uh, presentation, which is to identify activities and issues 
related to uh, electronic tools for the development and sustenance of uh, OER policy. So uh, let's go to the next slide, please. The next slide on electronic tools. Hello, the next I've, slide on I've moved on two electronic slides. tools. This one. No, the, second, the next one. Yes, thank you. So from the survey, we had uh, two surveys, uh, the one for March and the July. Participants were able to, to suggest electronic tools and uh, sites that could, uh, please go back, that could help enrich the policy, developing policy in OER. And uh, I, we've been able to collect them in tabular form. Uh, please, uh, back to slides. We have a... Uh, can you go back twice? Yes, please stop there. Yes. So we have uh, this, this uh, uh, site and the tools and possible collaborations were collated by the respondents that took part in the March and the July uh, survey. And uh, we have the Open Government Partnership. Uh, we have the OER map and open education policy network, then uh, the Commonwealth of Learning Oasis and uh, the repository, uh, uh, the institutional OER policy template. Then we have the ICD, -E, then the SNEP, then open education policy lab, then open policy development toolkit, uh, then the, the next slide, we have uh, the Open Ed Consult, OER Info, then the European Institute for Learning, Innovation and Cooperation, the ICOR, the International Community for Open Research and Education, then Open Up Education, for, by Learning Innovation, that's uh, from uh, Christian Streck, then the Learn STEM, then the Zenodo, and the Hivos, and so on. So these are tools that were suggested by the respondents in the survey. Okay, the next slide, please. It's also uh, important to note that there were some, uh, some comments that were not really uh, tied to the specific tools. For example, in the survey for July, we were able to extract the comment from the Open Education Global uh, that uh, they suggested that uh, many activities related to open education and OER policy making are done in collaboration with partnerships with other organizations and also through the work of Open Education Global members. And some of the activities most of them, some of them, you could find them in the Open Education Global Annual Conference. There's one coming up uh, uh, very soon, uh, by the end of the year. And there uh, are also other relevant activities that are done in partnership with other organizations like the Open Education Policy Forum, the OER Map, the OER, uh, GoGN, Global OER Graduate Network, Open Education for, the better, for a Better World. So these are um, suggestions from the Open Education uh, global, uh, global Network. Then the last one is uh, also is a suggestion from the Creative Commons, which uh, uh, Cable Green has also noted earlier that uh, it's heartwarming that uh, the Creative Commons is ready to create model policies for all kinds of education policy, including but not limited to open licensing and sharing policies on publicly funded educational resources, open licensing and sharing policies on 
publicly funded uh, research resources, then promotion and tenure policy that supports instructors who openly license and actively share their educational resources as OER, and also Creative Commons is ready to assist in the legal open licensing training for ministry, departments of education, uh, lawyers, and so on. And this brings us to our last question, the thinking about the platform, okay? So we have to also throw it back so we can get insight, although the conversation is already ongoing in this area. So what are the user's need for the electronic tool for policy in OER? How would, how, who would use it? How? And what functionalities are necessary for sharing of information? So we will really be, we will really appreciate if we can throw more insight in this area. So thank you so much. Neil, please, over to you. Thank you. So if we have any further comments or inputs, uh, we already got quite good inputs, I think, from the survey results that Jane and Maria shared with us. Are there any additional comments that people would like to make on this? Um, this is a recurring question across the working groups. So um, I think we've, we've heard some of the answers already. We've got, uh, <laughs> unsurprising, Jan Newman from World Map. Uh, I, I thought you'd have some comments, Jan, so I'm unmuting you now. Off you go, or you'll have to unmute yourself, I think. But yes, I'm just unmuted them. Yes, I mean, we, we have seen already quite a lot of examples and um, uh, we, we had touched this question of, um, of electronic tools yesterday already. And for sure, the OER world map is uh, one tool which provides information, but out of the experience we, we have um, running this project for some years, um, I'm, I'm sure you're already aware of it, but I would like to mention it anyway, uh, to say that um, especially if it comes to networking and collaboration and communication, um, uh, we, we shouldn't um, focus only on the electronic tools, but also on um, human resources to support this um, community development. So um, it's not only a tool which is needed, but also um, editors or people who are uh, developing the uh, community doing comments and and triggering the communication and the discussion so this is one thing to be kept in mind and um, I mean um, uh, apart from just collecting data um, I, I'm, I'm still wondering and and this is something I'm I'm, I'm still missing something like a wiki on, 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 on policy making because there are so many open questions and terms which have to be, be defined so something like this should be implemented in a platform as well so Thank you, Jan. Um, we have uh, someone masquerading as Zenep, who I think is uh, um, Virginia Rhodes, uh, Rodez. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but let me unmute you and then you can introduce yourself properly. Uh, hi, all. Um, I'm with the Zenep uh, uh, link because uh, mine couldn't manage it. Uh, earlier, so I'm joining the meeting now, sorry. Uh, I would like to contribute with the second... Could you uh, just introduce yourself and, and where yes, you're from? Yes, I'm Virginia Rodet, I'm from Uruguay. I'm from Universidad de la República, I'm a professor. And uh, I'm the coordinator of the OER Center in, in, in my university. And also uh, we have uh, on Open Education, UNESCO chair, uh, just uh, in the process of uh, signing. Go ahead. Okay. Well, um, I was thinking about the, the question that uh, Mariscal sent me last night, and I think uh, such a tool could be useful to have a policy benchmark that can be consulted by stakeholders. I think a group of experts uh, that can uh, show in and, 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 and make uh, some advice uh, to anybody that is going to develop a policy in the in the country and i think uh 
uh, some uh, functionalities to support uh, all phases of the policy creation. I think uh, we have to model these uh, various phases uh, through the reconstruction of all the already developed uh, policy making processes. And uh, also the possibility to reuse uh, policy documents for adaptation to countries or could also be useful. I think it has to be a tool that can uh, um, um, hold the whole process of the policy making. Excellent. Thank you, Virginia. Um, do we have any other comments that people would like to make? Um, inputs they'd like to make on this topic? So it, it looks to me, I think, uh, Jane and Maria, like uh, quite a lot of participants have been in prior sessions. And so I think that this topic's been covered a couple of times already. Um, so maybe I can hand back to you and uh, we, we can wrap up the conversation now unless uh, Zenith is I other just, things. Yeah, like th I think uh, Werner has a comment that he might want to input. Uh, yes. Werner, would you like to take the floor? Thank you, Zeynep, uh, and sorry for, for all these uh, technical inconveniences. Uh, I just wanted just uh, to highlight, uh, I think, a major tool that was delivered uh, just after the OER recommendation was approved. Um, it's related to the guidelines um, for uh, developing uh, OER policies. I think the distinct uh, value of this tool in comparison of others uh, previous that are uh, you have uh, registered is that I think it's very much um, appealing to national governments or statewide uh, uh, governments and and I think it's it's very d different from uh, Werner you seem to have muted yourself so you need to unmute again do you hear me? We hear you now. Okay. Um, oh, just to highlight that too. I think it, it's a it's it's a it's a it's a game changer for for anyone that wants to think a national or a statewide policy. Thank you, Neil, and thank you, Sainab. Thank you, Werner. Um, so, Jane and Maria, back to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jan, Virginia, and Werner for your uh, comments and apportation. And uh, we have here a, a, a big, a big tax together because in, in this platform, uh, we can uh, dream uh, in different possibilities for the policy in OER, dreams and, act, and action, of course. Uh, we have to work in the user experience. Uh, we have to work in design center on user and the architecture. Information is very important in the platform, you know, and the user profile. And then in this way, uh, we have to work together with multidisciplinary vision. What do you think about this and about the, the importance for the platform for uh, policy OER. Just while I'm waiting for some responses to that question that you've posed, Maria, I'll just read out for the purposes of interpretation an input from Lisa in the Q&A, Lisa Petridis, um, who's just made one comment about electronic tools um, I think is important, specifically with regard to sharing challenges in policy making, etc., is that some, some people may not want to do this in an open or public format or rather might not be as helpful to others since they will not be able to be as candid as they might want to be in terms of strategies, etc. I think that's a very important observation that particularly in the area of policy making, if people are expected to speak openly, uh, it's often difficult for them to be. Sorry. 
So, any other observations or comments that people would like to make in response to, uh, to Maria's last question that she's posed? Right, I've got uh, Jan's hand again. So, Jan Newman, back to you. Yes, very quickly, uh, combining Maria's uh, question about dreaming uh, with uh, what I said before, I think if we um, are aiming at uh, sharing experiences made in policy making, we should aim at setting up a global network of observers. And um, maybe the first step would be to uh, implement five continental globes, uh, nodes, so that we have one observer at each continent um, looking out for new policies and making sure that there are case studies and, and, and um, being written down and shared to the other globe, um, continents. And um, later on, I think we can put it down and implement a second level um, addressing um, con um, country notes. Uh, we, we had a, uh, an approach in, in Germany with OER Info, uh, which was the central information site on OER, um, which um, works quite good. And I think um, if we really want to set up a, a, a global network, um, each country should have one information site like this, and this reports to Continental Globe uh, node, and the Continental Globe then um, leads, puts everything together and shares the information globally. So it's, it's three levels of networking, I think, which are needed. Thank you very much, Jan. Um, Leo has then added, picking up on Lisa's and Jan's comments, this is one of the challenges we are thinking about in the context of the OE policy, uh, sorry, OE policy hub. We can capture finished policies in inverted commas, but it's harder to register policy making processes in progress. But being able to share and discuss this would have enormous value. So this is maybe something that we can consider adding. And uh, it looks like Leo is going to add to his comments. So Leo, I've opened up for you if you'd like to uh, unmute. Uh, hi, it's Javier, it's just Leo, because I'm using Leo's link. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm a Javier also from, from the Open uh, edu uh, of Education Policy Hub. Uh, one of my, my reflection about this trying to uh, understand and putting uh, policies processes together, um, Jan just briefly mentioned that we're working on, on a set of recommendations for co-creation of, of policy making. We have had the input from uh, Jen Brain and Igor and other colleagues and uh, around the OE uh, policy world. But also I think it's, it's good to start looking at the way in which open government commitments are, are being made around not only open education, but anything regarding transparency, open data and open governance, because this is a good way to map a process of um, openly making policies, not only at, at government level, but also with the input from uh, the civil society and other organizations that are quite relevant for, for specific commitments. So maybe it's, it's a conversation that we need to have and it's something that I've been discussing also with Jen Brain, uh, to have with, and Werner is, is also been, been quite involved in this process to talk about uh, the involvement or like the practices from, from open government into developing a sort of a policy or, or a commitment or a strategic document. So that, that's it. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, any other comments or inputs from people? Please feel free to raise your hands. Um, uh, Igor, I've answered your question about next steps, which I think we'll cover in the closing session tomorrow. Uh, we have Virginia back again. So Virginia, I'm opening up for you. You should be able to unmute now, Virginia, if you'd like to. Yes. Now? It's okay? Go ahead. Okay. Well, um, I was thinking about the, the, the subject of sharing, uh, sharing um, 
instead of uh, what about thinking uh, uh, on a tool that can support and guide an entire development process it's, it's different than share information because share information is 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 a is an um i think it's an, an uh, a need that we have as a community of open education in the whole world but for uh, every every uh, uh every country or every uh, community that want to develop uh, a policy uh there are no no guidance so what about thinking on a tool that uh, instead of sharing information can guide the, the the development process i think if we can collect some information uh in a for example in an ethnographic way to to uh, reconstruct the way that uh, uh, every policy that uh, has been made in the in, in in each part that could be managed to uh we can develop a tool that can guide the process and generate uh, the ways to support the process uh, also uh, offering experts or because I, I i'm thinking about the 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 the, the way we can uh, um, spread uh, I, I think sharing information is is one step but guiding is different and i think policy can be uh, um a subject where uh, uh, each step can be uh, guided uh, better than, for example, uh, um, capacity building or dif it's different, uh, like uh, OER development or something like that. It's, policy is a, it, there are some uh, uh, steps that are common, uh, but uh, for example, in Latin America, countries don't know uh, the way to develop the policy. So, if uh, a tool that uh, can uh, guide this process is different than a, a tool that can collect share, uh, or, or share information, the, I, I'm not. I don't know if I can uh, be clear on that because my English. <laughs> That's very clear. Thank you. Um, and uh, Leo has responded by indicating that. Uh, they are preparing a guide for co-creating a policy which they will launch in September or October. So that would certainly be one resource that we can feed into the process. I think Igor also mentioned the important point earlier of first checking what's already been done before we create anything new um, and then working from there. So uh, that would make sense. That's all I have from my side so far, uh, Maria and Jane, if you'd like to move forward, I think, um, and this is, I, I'm not receiving any other uh, hands or comments, so maybe we could uh, move on. Oh, hang on, as I say that. Uh, Alexis has pointed out that Werner also mentioned the Col UNESCO OER guidelines as an example of such a tool. So uh, we've got lots of those links. We've, we've harvested them all from the chat and from the Q&A. Uh, and so I will make sure that they're all contained also in the uh, final working group reports. So all of that information will be shared with you when we compile our final reports from these sessions. And that can provide a start for the information sharing process. Back to you, Jane and Maria. Okay, uh, thank you, Neil. Yes, uh, and thank you, uh, uh, everyone for the questions and the suggestions and uh, Jan, I, I really appreciate the, your point on uh, you know, the need to also focus on human resources to support this initiative, not just uh, electronic tools. And uh, also your second point on uh, you know, setting up a network of, of observers, you know, in order to identify the policies out there so that we don't uh, replicate what has already been done. And also that ties that uh, to, to Igor's uh, observation that we need to check out uh, the policies out there before creating a new one. And Virginia, thank you also for your point on the need to, the possibility of reusing a, a policy for for in, the, in this area, in uh, open educational resources. And um, when, uh, when uh, you also mentioned uh, that a major tool out there for 
guide uh, the kind of guidelines for developing OER policy. And uh, you also stress on the highlight for that tool as a game changer. And uh, we are really grateful for that insight. Virginia, yes, uh, you're talking about uh, two kits out there. I think there are, I think Lumen Learning, the two kit for OE, uh, policy development is very uh, uh, detailed and helpful. And also, I'm aware that the Commonwealth of Learning has a, a, a further a toolkit for higher education institutions, which actually helped us in Nigeria when we drafted the OER policy for higher education in Nigeria. It was quite uh, very helpful. So, um, with that, I say thank you all for your observations, your questions. Uh, Maria, do you have anything to add? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jane. And thank you, everyone, for your uh, comments and apportation for this important topic. The policy, uh, we have a, a very sensible topic because the policy, uh, why the policy for OER and how we can improve best practice. We have to remember that the policy uh, is for the society, um, for best society, and in this way, uh, the, we have to, to work in, in this term, in social appropriation. Appropriation social in Spanish, social appropriation to impact in the people, in the best life, in the best way. And in this sense, the electronic and the, poli the policy and our sport is in this way. Thank you for, for this session and uh, have a good uh, holiday, that if, if you can. <laughs> and take care. Thank you for all. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Maria Soledad, thank you, Jane. Um, I'm having some identity crisis now because I'm all over the place, but I'm nowhere. So I'm. Thank you for everybody um, for your participation and for your inputs. I think Neil has put on the chat that the uh, the materials, the resources are accessible on a website, which I'll be sending out to the entire Di Dynamic Coalition, and you can send him additional inputs that could be taken into account for the report of this session. And I'd like to thank you once again and just let you know that we will be having our next session tomorrow morning at 10. It's our last session. I know it seems like it's just nonstop, but it's really actually our last one. And it's on capacity building. It's tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock at CET, same place. Uh, on Zoom. Uh, for those of you who had some difficulties uh, getting into into the Zoom room, I apologize though I have no control over it except for giving you my password and finding you other passwords. But uh, we hope it'll be worked out but we have no guarantees so if you do come you have a problem let us know and we'll try to fix it. Um, and Zoom is a capricious animal so we'll have to see that everything works out the best that it can. Thank you very much and see you tomorrow hopefully. And tomorrow afternoon we're having the closing uh, session. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. Adios. Bye -bye. Adios, Marie. Uh, Adios. Jane, Jane, um, yeah? Jane and, and uh, Mary Sol, I'll, I'm going to send you an, an invitation in one second for a debriefing. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>